Good morning, and welcome to, as it were, Fairview Baptist Church. Um, it's actually Saturday right now as I'm recording this. We have uh, several people in our congregation who have contracted COVID-19, uh, myself included. And because I'm starting to feel poorly, I thought I better record something to send out on Sunday morning rather than trying to do something live tomorrow when I may not be able to. So I um, wanted to say thank you to everybody who uh, participated in our 25th anniversary celebration last year, last week uh, at the church. Uh, we've been here 25 years and uh, it has been a joy and um, we love you folks and so appreciate everybody who gave and, and who worked to make that celebration possible. It was wonderful to have our whole family here again um, to celebrate that. So anyways, uh, we are not having any activities at the church building this week. Uh, as I said, several people have come down with COVID. We actually have nine families who have someone who is sick. So uh, that being said, um, I won't be looking at Revelation today either. I want to share with you something from Lamentations chapter 3 um, about what do we do in a time like this, you know, when all of a sudden we've got a bunch of people sick again after all we've been through. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love. We pray, Lord, that as this message goes out and is welcomed into people's homes or their cars or wherever it is they're listening to it, Father, I pray that it would be welcomed into their hearts and that your name would be glorified and you would be lifted up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Lamentations chapter 3, beginning in verse 20, it says, I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. Let them sit alone in silence beneath the Lord's demands. Let them lie face down in the dust, for there may be hope at last. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them and accept the insults of their enemies. For no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because of the greatness of his unfailing love. For he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. The first thing that I want you to note from this particular passage, and that was actually Lamentations 3, beginning in verse 20 and reading down through verse 33. In verse 21, it says... Yet I still dare to hope. When we go through difficult times, we can still place our hope in God. And it, this verse goes on to say, when I remember this, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. God is gracious to us. He is good to us. And his mercies never cease. We can trust him wholeheartedly. We can give him all of our hearts. We can give him our life and know that he is going to bless us as we follow faithfully in his footsteps and follow faithfully his word. Verse 23 says, great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. There's that word hope again. I will hope in him. And again, we've talked about it many times. This is that this is that no so kind of hope. I know that God will come through. I've seen him come through in the past, and I know that I can trust his promises, and therefore I will hope in him. Now, if we place our hope in anything else, it will falter. Money can disappear overnight. Health can be gone in a heartbeat. Fame can be gone in a heartbeat. We see that all the time, especially in this 
day of the cancel culture, where if you say the wrong thing once, the whole world could turn on you in a heartbeat and you're, you're done. Then no more fame for you. Verse 25 says, the Lord is good. That's the reason that we can hope in him is because he is good. We can trust him. And when bad things come into our lives, if they get through to us, then they come with a good purpose. What is that purpose? Well, the last part of this particular chapter, which we didn't read and we won't go into a lot today, part of the reason that bad things come in is because of sin in our hearts. And so what do we need to do? We need to wait quietly for the Lord's salvation, verse 26. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord, it says. The last part of verse 25 is to those who search for him. Okay, the Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Are you searching for him? Sometimes when bad things happen, we just kind of throw our hands up and go, why, why, why me, why me? And we start whining and crying and carrying on and, and we don't really stop to listen and we don't really stop and seek the Lord in the process of it. So wherever you're at, whatever you're dealing with today, search the Lord, search for the Lord in the situation you're in and ask him. Sometimes when bad things happen, he's just trying to teach us something because he does love us so much. Sometimes he's wanting us to just slow down and take a break. We get busy in this world today. And we've kind of got the attitude that if you're not busy, well, then you're, you're a failure. And that's not always the case. He says here, it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. And we're going to see that again in a moment. Verse 27 says, and it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. If you haven't already done it, any age is a good age to submit to the Lord. But if you're a young person listening to this, submit to the Lord now. It'll make your adult life so much easier if you will submit to him now instead of him having to work and work and work you over to get you to submit. Verse 28 says, Let them sit alone in silence beneath the Lord's demands. There's a footnote here in my NLT Bible, and it says, sit alone in silence. This is humble submission, and humble submission stops the tongue and quiets the heart. When we just decide, you know what, I'm not going to let any of the crazy thoughts going on in my head rule this situation. I'm going to sit here quietly, search for the Lord, and then wait. The scripture tells us in John I believe it's John 10, 27, that his sheep hear his voice and he knows them. If you are his sheep, you hear his voice and he knows you. The question is, can you sit still long enough to listen and drown out all the other noises because this world is noisy? Our own thoughts can be noisy. Can you sit still long enough to hear your shepherd. If you'll do that, he'll speak. Verse 29 carries on with the idea of humility. Let them lie face down in the dust, for there may be hope at last. This is a, a humbling that says, Lord, I'll do whatever it takes to follow you. And if there is sin in my heart, you show it to me, I will confess it and forsake it. If you're teaching me something, let me know what it is. And I will try to learn it my best. Verse 30 says, Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them and accept the insults of their enemies. Now, understand that Lamentations was written at a time when Israel was at its worst. Judah was at its worst, actually. It had been, basically, Jerusalem was destroyed. Many of the Jews had been carried off to Babylon. And this is written by Jeremiah, who was considered the weeping prophet, um, and he's, he's so brokenhearted over his city, over all that has taken place. And he had preached the truth to people, but they would not listen. Um, and so here he is, as he's crying out to God, he's saying, I'm still going to trust you. Lord, help us to truly trust you. 
and even turn the other cheek when, when we are being disciplined by you. When trouble comes, instead of answering insult but with insult, to answer with blessing. Jesus quoted this very passage in the Sermon on the Mount. Turn the other cheek. Verses 31 through 33 go on and say, For no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. Now the Lord has promised that he won't abandon us, he won't forsake us, but that doesn't mean that it won't appear that he has. That doesn't mean that at times he won't back, pull back a little bit and let us go our own wild way just to teach us that our own wild way will get us into more trouble. Verse 32 says, Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because the greatness of his unfailing love. Now, if you have children and you've ever had to discipline them, you know how difficult that is. If you love your kids, when it comes down to the point where they have to be disciplined because they just won't obey otherwise, it breaks your heart. And hopefully, after you've had to discipline them, you come back around and say, you know what, we need to work this thing out and, and you, you need to understand that why I did what I did is because I love you. Verse 33 says, For he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. That was never God's plan for us. He never wanted for us to go through all the suffering that we go through. The world was created to be a perfect place. We chose to sin, and that got us in trouble, and it's gotten every person in trouble since then. But God made a way out through Jesus Christ. Jesus came and died on the cross to pay for our sins. You see, even though God brings discipline into our lives, he brings the ultimate blessing. If we will just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will have eternal life. And one day, we're going to have a new recreated world that is just full of the love of God. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I would urge you to do so now. Would you say this prayer with me, believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and saying with your mouth that Jesus is Lord? Say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead because he was sinless. And I want him to be Lord of my life. Lord Jesus, help me to follow you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide me every step of the way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love to hear from you. The phone number at the church is 765-452-9237. And we would love to hear from you and, and have a chance to share with you how you can begin your walk with your heavenly Father who loves you dearly. Well, folks, God bless you. I hope that you have a good week. If you don't have this thing, I hope you don't get it. If you do, I hope you get over it real quick, and we will continue to pray for all of you, and I know that you'll be praying for us as well. God bless you and keep you. Uh, if you receive our emails, um, the, the, the uh, news emails from the church, uh, you should have gotten one this morning with the link for this video, along with any announcements that were in the bulletin. So um, God bless, and Lord willing, we will see you in person next Sunday morning. And don't forget to turn your clocks uh, back an hour. Uh, you get an extra hour of sleep next weekend because uh, daylight saving time ends. Hallelujah.